Hello and welcome to this Kotlin and Android Studio tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be continuing on with our to-do list app. In the first tutorial, which I'll leave a link in the description, we built a bottom sheet modal which allowed the user to enter a new task. Well today we're going to put that new task into a list and then we're going to populate a recycler view using that list. Each one of our recycler view cells is going to be a card view which when clicked on will open up our sheet again and the user could then edit the information of that task item. Also we're going to add a completed button so that when they select the button it's going to complete our to-do list item and then right at the end we're going to add a pop-up time picker which will allow the user to select a due time for each one of our task items. So stick around um, and let's get started. Cool, so starting off, we're just going to build and run, get comfortable with what we've already got created, which is our bottom sheet. So you can enter a name and a description and we'll put it in this text view here on our main activity. So the first thing we're gonna do before we initialize our recycle view is we're actually gonna model our data because we wanna save all of our different task items. So we're gonna say file new Kotlin class. I'm gonna call this class task item. It's gonna have a variable called name, which is of type string, as well as a description, which is also a string. We're going to give our task item a due time which is of type local time and I'm going to put a question mark there meaning that it is an optional value so meaning that it can be null. We're also going to have completed date which is also optional and then we're going to have an ID which is of type UUID and then we're just going to say equal to UUID random ID so it just assigns it a random ID if we don't provide one. Cool so now we can head into our task view model and instead of name and description we're actually going to store a list of task items so they're going to be mutable live data which is a mutable list of task item. This isn't really how you're supposed to use view model because realistically you should be using something like SQL to make this data persistent, but that is gonna be the next tutorial. So we're just gonna do something a bit hacky to make this work. So we're gonna say init, we're gonna say task items value is equal to a mutable list of, so just initializing our list. We're gonna create a function which is called add task item, which receives a new task of type task item. And then we're gonna say list is equal to task items.value. And then we're gonna add our task to our list and then we're gonna post that value to our task items. So that's gonna trigger the update. And I'm just gonna do the double exclamation mark because I know that list isn't null. And then we're gonna copy and paste down this function and rename it to update task item. And instead of receiving a task item, we're gonna receive an ID as well as a name, description, and our due time. So below our list, we're gonna say task is equal to list find. Um, so go through each one of our lists and if you find one where the ID is equal to the ID that's been passed through, then we're gonna assign that to our task. And that should only ever happen once because uh, those UIDs should be unique. And then we're just gonna say task name is equal to name as well as description is equal to description. So um, assigning the object to the value that gets passed in and same thing for our due time. And then we're just gonna post that value to our list again. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste down our add task item. I'm gonna change it to set completed and we're gonna find our task item from our task item that gets passed through. And then we're gonna say if our task completed date is equal to null, we're gonna say task item completed date is equal to a new local date of now. Cool, so in our save action in our new task sheet, we obviously don't have our task view model description and name anymore. So we're just gonna assign those to variables. And then for our new task sheet, we're actually going to allow it to pass in a task item. So this is gonna be because we're gonna have an edit and new mode. We're gonna use the same uh, sheet, whether we're in edit mode or new task item mode. And so in our on view created, we're gonna say if our task item is not equal to null, and I'm gonna head in and give our text view an ID, just so that we can have either new task or edit task show up here. So we're gonna say binding task title text is equal to edit task. So we're gonna be in edit mode if the task item is not null. Otherwise, we're gonna be in new task mode and we're gonna set that title accordingly. So below our edit task line, we're gonna say val editable is equal to editable factory get instance. And we're gonna set our binding name text equal to our new editable and we're gonna give it our task item name. We're gonna do the same thing for description. So just copy and pasting down that and calling it description. So putting the value of whatever our task item that's been saved back into the edit text. Cool, so we can scroll all the way down to our save action now and we're gonna say if our task item is equal to null, meaning that we are in new task mode, we're gonna create a new task item, which is gonna have the value of our name, description, our due time. For now, we're just gonna do null as well as a completed date of null. And then we're gonna add that to our task view model. So we've already created that function. That was the one we created earlier. Otherwise, we're going to update our task view model and we're going to pass it through our task item ID as well as our name, description, 
and null for our due time. Cool, so let's build and run this and we can see that I haven't changed anything in the main activities. We just need to pass null for the task item of our new task sheet. We can remove these uh, observers for text views because they obviously aren't relevant anymore. And basically I just want to run this now to make sure that we haven't completely broken everything and obviously we haven't actually made it any sort of recycle view. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to head into our main activity XML. We are going to remove this linear layout and instead we're going to insert a recycle view. Our width is going to have match parent as well as the height is going to be match parent as well. Our ID is going to be to-do list recycle view and the background tint we're going to give it our color which is going to be our design default background color which is like a sort of gray color. Cool, and then we're going to create a new resource file. Uh, the root element is going to be our card view and this resource is going to be our task item cell. So what each one of our different to-do list items is going to look like. We're going to head into split and inside our card view, we're going to give it an ID. So we're just going to call it uh, task cell container. Corner radius, we're going to give it 5 dp. Our height, we're going to give it 90 dp. We're going to give it some margins, so 5 dp. So it's sitting just a little bit off the edge. And then inside our card view, we're going to insert a linear layout with a width and height of match parent. The orientation of this linear layout is going to be horizontal. And then inside here, we're going to have an image button. So this is going to be like our check on or off sort of round button. Uh, the height and width are going to be wrapped content and the ID is going to be our complete button. We're going to give it a little bit of margin horizontal and then we're going to right click on our drawable folder and create a new vector asset. I'm going to search for this check outline fill and I'm just going to rename this to checked underscore 24 because that name seemed just a, bit, a little bit long. Then we're going to do the same thing. So right click new vector asset and this one we're going to search unchecked and we're just going to do this circle and I'm just gonna call this unchecked 24. Cool, so now we can head into our image button and we're just gonna assign the source of our unchecked and we wanna give a background color, we're gonna give this transparent. Our gravity of center, so it sits in the center of our um, cell. Scale Y and scale X of 1.5, just making it a little bit bigger. And the content description is gonna be a checkbox. And then below this, we're gonna create a text view. So this is gonna be the name of our to-do list item. So width and height of wrap content. The ID is name. Text, we're gonna say placeholder because that just, we wanna have something to look at. And we're gonna have style is going to be our app compart title. Uh, gravity of center, uh, weight one. So this is gonna take up all the available space, this text view. We're gonna copy and paste this down and this is gonna be our due time. We're gonna remove the weight for this one. So that's just gonna be wrap content and we're going to give it a little bit of um, horizontal margin. And I'm just going to extract those string resources and then close off our cell. Cool, so let's head back into our main activity. We're going to create a function calling it set recycle of you. And inside here, we are going to just assign our main activity to a variable, just calling it main activity. Our task view model task items, we're going to observe. The owner is going to be this activity. And then inside here, we're going to say our to-do list recycle view, we're going to apply the layout manager of a linear layout manager. So this is just the most basic uh, layout manager for recycle view, so just one row. And then we actually need to assign an adapter, but we don't have an adapter yet. So we're going to say file new Kotlin class. I'm going to call this task item adapter. And this is going to be a type recycle view adapter. I'm going to create another Kotlin class because we need a task item view holder. And so we're going to say our task item view holder is of type recycle view view holder. And our task item view holder, we're going to receive context. It's also going to receive our binding of our task item cell. And then we can pass into the constructor of our view holder binding.root. And you can see the error messages have gone away there. So yeah, our recycle view adapter is of our type task item view holder. And if we click on this error message here, we're just gonna click implement members and select all. And then inside our task item adapter, we are going to receive a list of task items. So we're just calling that task items. And then in our onCreate view holder, we're gonna create a variable calling it from, which is equal to layout inflator from our parent context. And then we're gonna create a value called binding which is of our task item cell binding inflate. We're gonna inflate it from our from, as well as giving it parent and attached to parent is false. Then we can return our task item view holder and we're just gonna give it context and as well as our binding. Get item count is nice and simple. We're just gonna return our task item size. And then in our main activity, we can assign our adapter to our new task item adapter. And remember we need to pass it through a list of task items. So we can just say it because we're in a View model observe. Cool, so I'm just gonna command click or control click back on our task item view holder just to navigate back to 
our task item adapter and then to our task item view holder. Inside here, we're gonna create a function calling it bind task item, which receives a task item. Inside here, we're just gonna say binding name text is equal to our task item name. And then if we head into our task item adapter again, we're gonna say holder bind task item and just pass it through the task item and we're gonna get the specific task item by just passing through our position. So getting that out of the array. Cool, so if we build and run this now, we should have a working recycle view. So I'm just gonna create a new task, calling it new task. And you can see we've still got a placeholder and stuff there. Yeah, that's a very basic recycle view with a card view. So what we're gonna do is head into our task item view holder. And we're gonna say if our task item due time is not equal to null, then we're gonna set our binding due time equal to, and actually we need to create a time formatter. So I'm just gonna create a value calling it time format, which is a date time formatter with a pattern of hours and minutes. And then so our due time.txt is equal to our time format and we're going to format our task item due time. And if it's not null, we're just going to set it to an empty string. Command or control click into our task item, just to open that up. And we're going to create a function in here called is completed. And that is going to be equal to if our completed date is not equal to null. And then we're going to do uh, another function. We're going to call this image resource. And so depending on whether or not it's completed, we want to give it the right image for the button. So we're gonna say if is completed, we wanna return our R drawable checked. Otherwise we wanna return the unchecked image. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the color. So we're gonna say image color. This one's gonna require some context. It's of type int. It's gonna be if it's completed, we wanna make it purple. Let's actually create a function down below called purple, which receives context. And we're gonna say context compat get color, Cut, pass it through that context. And the color is our purple 500. Uh, duplicate that down and create a black function as well and now we can say if it's completed we want to return purple otherwise we want it to be black and now with those two functions that we created in our task item we can say if our task item is completed we're going to set our paint flags of our name we're going to call that strike through so it's going to like put a line through when we complete our task item we're going to do the same thing for our due time and then we're also going to say our complete button we want the image resource to be the correct image resource and we're gonna do the same thing for the color filter. So that's like the, the image tint. So we're gonna say task item image color and remember that one needed some context. So we'll pass that through. And we're gonna create a new Kotlin class file which is gonna be our task item listener. And this is actually an interface and it's gonna have two functions. So the first one's gonna be our edit task item. So when you click on the card view and then there's gonna be another one which is gonna be complete task item which is when you click on the complete button. So our task item view holder is going to need this click listener pass through. And once it is, we can say our complete button set on click listener. We are just gonna call whatever the interface says. So click listener, complete task item, and pass it through the task item. We're gonna do the same thing for our task cell container. So whenever someone clicks on the card view, we wanna go into edit mode. So we're gonna say our click listener is um, gonna edit the task item, pass it through the task item. Now we're just gonna copy paste that into our task item adapter because we're actually gonna get this from our main activity. So our main activity is gonna implement our task item click listener, which we just created. Uh, we're gonna click on implement members and that's created those two override functions there. So the first one being edit task item. And when this happens, we wanna create our new task sheet and we wanna use the same tag as, but this time pass it through a task item. And if it's a complete task item, we already created that in our task view model. So we're just gonna call that off our task view model. And our adapter, we just need to pass it through our main activity as well. And if we build and run this, we can create a new task. I'm gonna call this one water garden and hit save. And if we click on the button, uh, it's checking as well as I put a line through edit garden. And then when I click on it, uh, it's put that information back into the modal because we're in now edit mode. Cool, so the final thing left to do in this tutorial is add a time picker to our new task sheet. So we're just gonna copy paste the material button and instead of it being save, we're gonna call it select time. I'm gonna give it an ID of time picker button. And then I'm just gonna give our save button some different colors. So a background tint as well as a text color of our primary and our color on primary, just to make those two buttons look a little bit different. And then in our new task sheet, we're gonna create a private value calling it due time, which is an optional local time initialized to null. We're gonna pass that through to our new task and our update task item. And if our task item is not null, and our task item due time is not null, then our due time is equal to our task item due time. And this actually needs to be a variable, not a value. And then below that, we're gonna say update time button text, which we're gonna create a function for this. So we're gonna set our time picker button text equal to the string 
Um, we just want it to be our hours and minutes. So 02D and then the little time dots and we're gonna pass that through our due time hour as well as our due time minute. And below our save button, we're gonna create an on-click listener for our time picker button. And inside here, we're gonna create a function calling it open time picker. If our due time is equal to null, then we wanna set our due time equal to just the current time. And then we're gonna create a listener. This is gonna be of type time picker dialog on time set listener. This has three variables, the first one being the picker itself, but we're not too worried about that. Uh, it also has selected hour and selected minute and we're gonna set our due time equal to the local time of our selected hour and our selected minute. And then we're gonna call our update time button text functions. And then we're also, below that, we're going to open our dialogue. So we're gonna say dialog is equal to time picker dialog, pass it through at activity. The listener is the listener we just created, as well as giving it the hour and minute as the due time hour and minute. 24 hour view is equal to true. And then we're gonna say dialog show. And we also wanna give the dialog a title. So I'm just gonna call it task due. And if we build and run this, uh, you can see we can add a new task. I'm just gonna call this dentist appointment. And if we select a time, I'm gonna choose uh, 2.30 <laughs> and we hit okay. That's changed it in the button there. And if we hit save, it's shown up as a task. So we can also add uh, another task here. We're gonna call this one school exam. And this one is gonna be at, we're gonna say 3.15 in the afternoon. And if we click on one of those things, so our dentist appointment is done now, it's got the line through our due time and we're gonna do the same thing for our school exam. So there you have it. That's how you create a recycler view in Android Studio using Kotlin. We've built a very basic to-do list, which is a recycler view with card views nested inside it. I'll leave a link in the description to the next tutorial where we make the data persistent. Uh, if you found any value in this tutorial, consider giving it a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one.